Hello and welcome. I'm Sophie Boyer de la Giraudet. I have the pleasure of introducing you to Richard Kirby, Inter-Regional Advisor of the United Nations. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, nice to see you. And what are the recommendations from the United Nations to governments today as they embrace mobility and mobile government? Well, I think the United Nations is looking for the multi-channel aspect of it. So the more opportunities that the governments provide their citizens to access information and services, the better. So we see mobile or wireless uh, technology as the way of the future here. Uh, I think more countries are now investing in mobile technology over the wired technology. So to us, it's a way of moving forward, especially in developing countries where it's less expensive and they can move forward and actually have better access as well. And um, in, the, in this context, what is the role of open data, uh, government open data for mm -hmm. sustainable development? Well, open data allows um, governments to be more of a facilitator of data as opposed to being the only producer of data. And the sustainability aspect of it will allow data entrepreneurs to develop services for people. In essence, the people can develop their own services using government data, which will be more effective as well. Are there any governments who are uh, spearheading this trend or two? The UK and the US are, are two of the major countries um, imploring uh, open data systems in place. But a lot of the uh, Gulf countries are also trying to do the same. So we look forward to a bigger pie in the future. What are the risks of sharing data that are as valuable as a resource as the, the one that government has? Yeah, the major risk is, is a security one, to ensure that the data is actually properly prepared and, and, um, and safeguard. Because otherwise, people can take your information and use it for other purposes. So government have to ensure that their data sets are secure. And how do open data platforms uh, represent a business opportunity for the private sector uh, beyond only the startups or the, how can I say, the people developing applications mm -hmm. from? Well, there was the question of having private sector data as well being available to the public as well. I think that's more difficult to do. But uh, from a, uh, an, entrepreneur, an entrepreneurial point of view, it's beyond the small uh, companies. The bigger companies can also embrace open data. So especially in terms of defense league, the defense uh, systems, uh, education, health, all these uh, po possibilities are available using open data. And uh, does uh, the availability of open data represent a certain contest now between the small and the large companies as uh, large companies usually had access to way richer resources in terms of data and information than the small company? Right. That's correct. But with open data, it's the same platform for everyone. So the, the, level, the ground is leveled at this point. That is very interesting. And uh, how would you uh, consider the role of identities to change in the future, uh, mm -hmm. and also the legislation surrounding them to support this in a, uh, within a trust model we can yeah. truly rely on? Well, identity management, especially in developing robust and, and safeguard identity cards, is, is going to be a critical uh, next step forward for open data, because that information captures a lot of information about you. So with your card, if it's a passport weighted card, you can see where you traveled, you can see if, you, if it has a uh, financial application, you can see what you bought using the same card. So the card can actually dictate your entire life within that card and capture all your life events. And that information can be very valuable to, to entrepreneurs and uh, medium-sized firms. Thank you very much for this very interesting perspective. And My uh, pleasure. Have a good day. Thank you.